Hi. Previously, we talked about two equations. One is the definition of momentum itself, P equals to M times V. The other one is the law of conservation of momentum. And while well, in IGCSE, we only focus on two objects at most. So that's why we only have M1 and M2 in the equation. And so this is the equation itself. Okay, so I hope you remember these two already. And here comes the last equation in momentum chapter. That is F equals to MV minus MU over T. You could actually derive it if you don't remember. And that is F equals to MA, which is Newton's second law. And the other thing that you need is the definition of acceleration that we learned earlier in chapter 2. And so that is F equals to M and substitute A as in V minus U over T. And you'll be able to get the equation we have mv minus mu by just expanding it. And in fact, the t, I would say, uh, we should put delta t because this is a time that you experience a force. And usually when we talk about momentum, it will be a collision. And that time will be very short. So I think using delta t will be a better description. Notice that this force should be referred as average impact force because the A that we take V minus U over T is an idea of average acceleration only. So the force you calculate is also the average force correspondingly. However, in real life, you know that the force, let's say if you just slam someone's face, you find out the force is not constant for sure. An example can be seen here on the graph. You can see that the force starts from zero and at a certain time, it will be at its peak and then when say the hand is leaving, then it will gradually decrease until zero. That means uh, the point where you literally leave each other. So let's try to go back and just remind ourselves that this is average force only. Okay. And the other thing that I would like you to think about is that uh, if you look at this graph, try to use the equation and deduce what is the area under the curve representing in physics. Let me give you some time. The answer is very simple. You can see that the y axis is force, x axis is t. And so if you want to find some sort of area in a graph like that, then the meaning of the area must be something to do with the force multiplied t time. Okay, so it's like whenever you have a graph that is having, um, let's say, power against time. Okay, and again, no matter what shape you have, okay, this is so exaggerated. And then if you want to find the area under the curve, then the area will have a physical meaning that is the y, whatever on y and whatever on x, multiply together. Of course, this is just an idea. Uh, more mathematically speaking, uh, you can use the idea of calculus, more precisely, integration, integrating the power with respect to t. So if you haven't learned that, that's totally fine, right? So I would say you can just take it as p multiply t here. And if you try to recall what you have learned in physics, that will mean energy, okay? And so the same ideas apply here for the area under this curve. Uh, you can use the idea of force times the time. And according to what we have learned, in fact, this equation simply, you can rearrange it. And so that will equal to mv minus mu. Let's write down here, mv minus mu. And in fact, if you look at these two, this is a momentum mass times velocity. This is also momentum, mass times velocity. And this is the final one. This is the initial one. And therefore, you can also call this as change in momentum, right? which I actually mentioned here. And just somehow, uh, someone in the past, a great scientist invented the name for change in momentum. We call it impulse.
right? Seems like a very cool name, impulse. But what it means is simply changing momentum. So just show you now. So let's look at how this equation can tell us some practical idea in our real life. If you look at this equation, and if you try to look at delta t, this is a contact time that you have. In a case where when you increase the contact time, and let's say you cannot change m, the mass itself, or the speed v or u itself, then the only thing that can get to change is the force f. And so in that case, it can reduce the force. And in fact, many different applications in our life adapted this idea and help us a lot. Let me give you a first example. So the first example is this one. Guess what? The airbag. So I guess you all know what airbag is. It's when you uh, unfortunately have a car accident, then the sensor would know and predict, oh, this is happening, and the airbag will come out and pop out uh, in the you know, controlling wheel column. And so instead of slamming your face onto the panel, uh, you'll be you know, colliding with the airbag itself. And obviously it's kind of elastic, all right, or bouncy, you may say, and that will increase the delta T in your equation and reduce the force that you are having. And so obviously then you probably would injure less in this case, at least for your head. So let's put it down, air back in the car. Can you think of two more applications? So let's pause the video, try to think about it. A few moments later. All right, so let me give you my two examples. Look at this. This is not a, not a normal pair of shoes. It's basketball shoes, obviously. And you can see that uh, the thing that are different is that you can see uh, at right here, it's usually like thicker in general or more elastic in general. And that served the purpose because when you play basketball, you had to jump, right? I mean, otherwise you are not playing it properly, probably. And so if you think about playing basketball with your bare foot, then it's going to be a problem because whenever you jump, then it's going to hurt your legs basically, right? And so that's why you have to wear shoes and these shoes further improve by increasing again the delta T and reducing the force. So what happened is you have less force basically when you jump and when you stand after you jump, of course, you have to come back down, right? No one can, can just jump and stay in the mid-air. So when you come back down from the air, then the force impacting on your feet will be less. So uh, in that case, I guess it will just be more durable for yourself. I mean, your legs will be more durable, so you won't get hurt. The next one will be bicycle. I'm not sure if you know, bicycle actually has a certain mechanism here as well. However, this is applicable to certain bikes only, and this is one kind of bike that is called the mountain bike, okay? Which I, I also, um, you know, ride a lot on this uh, in the past. And so the difference between this one and other bike, if you try to Google, Google and try to search road bike, uh, is a bit different, right? For mountain bike, they will have these two columns next to the front wheel. And what inside is that they are designed for mountain biking, right? So obviously they have a certain spring system, okay? And so whenever you're riding on a bouncy road, again, mountain bike. So obviously as you go up or down, and, you know, maybe some rock, etc. compared to road bike, which is supposed to be a straight flat road. And so this is specially designed with the spring. And so the spring can, again, help you to increase the delta T and reduce the F. So in that case, you will feel more comfortable. All right, so let me put down here, basketball shoes, and then the mountain bikes spring system. 
Okay, if you got any other examples, leave me a comment below. If we try to understand what we have mentioned about increasing the time, uh, keeping the change in momentum the same, but then lowering the force, you can take it this way. Look at this graph. And what happens is if you can increase the time, maybe I don't draw it here, uh, increase the time as in stretching the x-axis. So you can see the original time is like that much only. If you try to stretch it out, then obviously keeping the area the same, then definitely you have a lower force, right? No matter the peak or the so-called somewhere average. So in that case, that is the whole idea itself. You try to visualize what happened on the graph by increasing the delta t. Lastly, here is saying that for momentum, you know is mass times velocity, so the unit could be kg meter per second. And if you try to look at what we have just learned about the equation, then now you should also know that the unit could also be f times t, that means newton second. This is the same unit equivalent to the one that we have for momentum. All right, before we end this video, let's try an example first. So you can find the question on your notes, all right, this page. And we are talking about, uh, I'm just trying to, to think of an example that is uh, something we call the explosion. All right, but in fact, of course, it's not really explosion. It's something like initially two objects, they are not moving. And somehow uh, there is, yeah, the explosion happened and they were kind of separate. Okay, so this is an example. Um, you may, I don't know, if you play video game, you may have heard about this, uh, a rocket propelled grenade, RPG. Uh, and let's say it has a mass of 7 kg. Okay, and when you launch it, this is the speed. Assuming you are shooting horizontally, what is the recoiling speed? So recoiling speed means when you shoot something that is really heavy quickly, you kind of having like a push that go back up, right? So this is called the recoiling speed. And try to calculate this, all right? And you may ask me, hey, hey, we don't have the information about uh, the mass of ourselves. So yeah, that is correct. So let's take it as 70 kg of a regular, you know, adult. So pause the video and try it yourself. A few moments later. Okay, so for this question, what we have to do is simply by conservation of momentum only. Okay, so basically what you have learned earlier. So let's put down the equation, mu plus mu, mv plus mv, one, one, two, two, one, one, two, two. And in fact, before you launch it, both you and the whatever rocket are both stationary, right? So on left hand side is zero, literally. And for right hand side, you can say uh, the rocket itself 7 kg moving in 115. So that will be the momentum they have. And for yourself, it will be 70 and the V2. So simply using calculator, you can find out the answer to be negative 11.5 meter per second. So that's the speed when you just launch the grenade um, in the opposite direction. And that's why we have negative in this value because you're launching it this way and then your recalling speed is going backward. Part two is asking you about the recalling force. And that is probably something more important because for the speed, you don't really feel that easily, right? The recalling force is actually the force that is acting on your shoulder probably when you are launching it. So let's say the time, delta T given to be 0 0.5 second, calculate the force. Try to use a new equation and pause the video now. A few moments later, all right, I think you should find it very simple. You just have to recall the equation F equals to MV minus MU over T, okay, for yourself. So in that case, that will be 70. V will be the one that we find 11.5 minus zero because initially we had zero speed, okay? And the T is 0 0.5 simply. So the average force you can calculate by the calculator. 
which should be 1610 Newton. Wow, that seems to be a lot. Think about this. How can you quantify this? Or put it this way. If, if a kid asking you, hey, what is 1610 Newton? How do you explain to the kid? You can explain this way. Remember there was an equation called W equals to mg, weight equals to mass times the gravity. And so if the force is the weight acting on you, which is 1610, then you can imagine on Earth, let's say it's around 10. So the mass is going to be 161 kg. So imagine, I don't know how, but as we said, a normal uh, regular, I should say, uh, atom will have around maybe 70 kg uh, of mass then this is more than two already so imagine if you are lying down here and there are two people that is on top of your shoulder because that is the point where you experience a recalling force uh, actually more than two people how would you feel I mean that is the feeling that you would have when you do this so that is why for people who are launching it they may want to sit down or try to find a way to keep themselves more stable before they launch it so for example like sitting down like here okay so the force acting on you would not be affecting as much